All right, so this is a Creek Audio amplifier. It's a model 4330 version 1.1. So it looks like a pretty low power amplifier. It does have a toroidal power transformer. And instead of using a couple of large filter caps, I use a bunch of individually small filter caps. And right off the bat, I'm looking at these capacitors and I see some bulge tops. Not too terribly bad, but nevertheless, some of them are bulged. I'm not sure what that is. Did that capacitor leak? These are Samwa capacitors, 85 Celsius. Who puts 85 Celsius caps in? Oh, look at that down there. It looks like that one may have leaked a little bit. I'm not quite sure. That one seems to look okay. Even though that's one of the ones I believe was not bulged at all. Anyhow, they're all Samwa caps. Samwa caps were the caps Samsung used for so many years and they had so many recalls on these things. But let's go ahead and power this unit up and see what happens. Okay, so I've got some speakers connected to it and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the power button up front just for a second, cause get ready for this. Yeah, it's got some square wave buzz coming out of it for sure. Well, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is pull the board out of here and we'll do an ESR on these capacitors right here and see what they check like. Even this little guy right here has got a bulge to it. Okay, got the ESR meter out and ready to go. Just verify some lead integrity first, close to zero. So they have three 3300 microfarad capacitors in parallel for a total of 9900 microfarads. So. I better see zero. First, we'll go ahead and just double check our lead integrity and we're right at zero. And I see an ohm and a half. Absolutely terrible on that bank. And I see eh, just under half an ohm, about a third of an ohm. Absolutely terrible. And then there's this one other capacitor right here. This is a 470, so I'd expect to see about a quarter ohm at most. And I'm seeing about 75 ohms on that one. That one is bad as well. So at a minimum, this thing is going to need six 3300 microfarad filter capacitors and a single 470 microfarad filter capacitor. But before I go any further, I want to make sure that no damage was done to the audio output transistors. So I'm just going to do a quick junction test on those transistors to make sure that they're good. Okay, here we go. These appear to be all the same polarity transistors as if to say there's not one NPN and one PMP. So I'm on the base, base to collector, I get 0.7 volt drop. Base to emitter, I get 0.371 volts drop. So there must be some kind of a resistor across that because I get it in both directions. Next one, base to collector, 0.712. Base to emitter, 371. And once again, it's the same in both directions. Base collector 722, that's 0.722 volts and 0.372 volts in both directions. And lastly, 0.713 volt drop and 0.371 in both directions. So I just think there must be some kind of a pull down resistor between the base and emitter on these units. I have not looked up a schematic on this. Not even sure if I could find one, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do a preliminary quote at this point to my customer and see if he's willing to put seven filter capacitors in this thing, which I'm probably gonna to have to order. It's kind of a specialized capacitor, but as usual, I'm gonna go with a much higher quality capacitor. I'll definitely go with a 105 degrees Celsius capacitor and a good name brand cap like a Panasonic or a Nichicon. I'm not gonna go with another cheap Samwa brand capacitor. Okay, parts for the Creek amplifier have arrived. I've chosen Panasonic replacement capacitors for this one, 3300 at 35 volts and 470 microfarads at 50 volts, spec'd exactly as the original capacitors were supplied from the factory. So let's go ahead and get these guys installed, power this unit up and see if we get better results and a little bit less buzz, hopefully. So I'm gonna start by adding fresh solder to all the pads and I'm gonna unsolder. It just helps to get these unsoldered a little bit easier.
All right, now we'll get the solder sucker and go to town. Well, as you can tell, a couple of them wanted to fight. Those big heavy leads on these capacitors, they bent them over on the circuit board, making them almost impossible to straighten up. Normally I can get the tip of the solder sucker on the leads and then bend them back up into position, but these were having none of that. But ultimately I won. So next I need to go ahead and clean off the capacitor goo that leaked out of some of these capacitors, even a little bit on that small one right there. So normally just water is some of the best solvent to get these off because unfortunately the magical solution acetone won't touch this. So let me get a rag and some water and we'll try to wipe up that circuit board. Well, quite a difference. This thing wanted to fight the whole way. The capacitors coming off the board, the electrolyte that leaked on the board must have been on there for years because it did not want to let go. Anyhow, let's go ahead and place the new capacitors and we'll try to solder the leads in straight this time so that if this has to happen again, it'll be much, much easier to service next time. All right, there's all the new capacitors placed on the board. So you might've seen me underneath and what I was doing down there was slightly bending the leads over. I'm gonna go ahead and solder one lead and then stand up the other lead, solder the second lead and then heat the first lead back up and stand it up perfectly straight. All right, there we go. All the capacitors have been installed. The leads are straight now. So the next person that may have to change these years down the road is going to have a much, much easier time. Let's go ahead and hit it with some magical solution acetone and get that flux off the board at this point. All right, looks much, much better. I did notice another small electrolytic capacitor, so I'm gonna drag the ESR meter out and we'll test that one as well. Okay, so that one's a little 10 microfarad capacitor. So if I see anything over about four ohms, I'm gonna say that one's okay. It lives right here. First, I'm gonna verify my lead integrity is good. And we're right on zero. And I'm seeing 25 ohms on that one. Well, let's go ahead and get that one unsoldered and changed as well. So I have a replacement 10 at 25 volts. It's a Kemet. They're pretty good quality caps. I consider them like just generic little caps. They're pretty cheap. They're nothing like the Nichicons or the Panasonics. Let's go ahead and install it. Just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and check the ESR on that new cap I just installed. Yep, half an ohm, absolutely perfect. So I wanted to show you, if you're looking for an ESR meter, this will actually ESR capacitors. Let's go ahead and test one of the old ones here that did not have the leads corroded off of it. It says it's a capacitor and the ESR on this one is 0.93 ohms and it reads 2125 microfarads. Let's check another one, see what it says. Keep in mind these are 3300 microfarad capacitors. 
2900 with an ESR of 0.64. Let's go ahead and test a brand new one. I did order extras. 3,352 with an ESR of 0.05 ohms. That's what I would expect to see. Just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and test one of the new 10 microfarad capacitors and compare it to the old 10 microfarad capacitor as well. So I have the same capacitor, the Kemet. Lead polarity is not important on this. It's not putting any kind of voltage across the capacitor. Ten point nine microfarads with an ESR of 0.76 ohms. Let's go ahead and test the old one just for the fun of it. Now this won't test in circuit. It can't have any resistance across the capacitor. One thousand eighty eight nanofarads with an ESR of 0.14 thousand ohms. That's one hundred and forty ohms. 1,088 nanofarads is 1.088 microfarads. You have to move the decimal point three places to the left. So that's a 10 microfarad capacitor that reads 1.088. Anyhow, if you're looking for an ESR meter, um, I bought this on eBay. It was, I think like $25. I've had it for probably seven or eight years. I don't even know if these are still available, but if you want an ESR tester cheap, it will test capacitors out of circuit. It'll test transistors, FETs, resistors, and it's not too terribly bad for the price. Just wanted to share that little bit of information with you. Okay, let the reassembly begin. I'm not sure who actually designed this thing. but it's a very, very tight fit. And one of these has to have a washer on it. And I'm pretty sure... It's going to be the volume control. Okay, here we go. Speakers are connected. The power is turned on. I'm gonna hit the power button. Remember what happened last time. Just a dull thud. That sounds excellent. I have some audio going into this. Let's go ahead and hit play. But I'm only getting audio out of one channel. Well, the input selector switch definitely needs to be cleaned. Sometimes you can just run these things around a few times. If you don't have any deoxit. Working perfectly now. So what happens, oh, listen to the volume control. Let's turn the power off. Let it discharge the capacitors. And then we'll run this around a few times too. So if you don't have deoxit, sometimes just working these controls a few times actually polishes the contacts in them. So I'm gonna work the volume control and the selector switch a few times. And we'll just see if it makes any difference just in case you don't have any deoxit on hand. Power back up. Yeah, it's still a little staticky at the very bottom end. Once you get into it though, it's perfectly fine. Just right at the bottom end. But that took care of the mode selector switch. It's perfectly fine now. Well, let's go ahead and hit the volume pot, which lives right up here, and the band selector switch 
with some deoxidant and see if that takes care of it. Well, it's time for a brand new can of deoxit. My other one ran out on the last video. So I'm not sure this one actually has the high-low medium adjust. Huh, not sure if I like this. Optional flexi tip. Where's that at? Did I miss it in the package? Yeah, I could use the flexi tip right here, that's for sure. So I'm just going to shoot it in the side of the volume control pot. Give it a couple quick spritzes. Work it back and forth. Get my rag here and soak up any of the excess. I'm going to tilt this forward so it runs down just a little bit. And we'll do the same thing here on the input select switch. Well, let's go ahead and give it another try and see what happens. Just the ever so slightest little fuzz right at the bottom. Might just be a defect in the pot. I'm not sure I'd ever find a replacement pot with the motorized volume control built into it. I think it's going to be just fine though. It definitely sounds way better than that uh, that it did before. So I think the customer is going to be very happy. Well, I think that's going to be it. I really can't think of anything else to do to this thing. Clean the volume pot. Clean the input selector switch. Audio sounds really good out of this thing. So that's it. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Once again, everybody, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.